Greetings and welcome to the well. What would you do if I told you that music has a spiritual dimension, not just a physical dimension, not just an emotional dimension? Music can affect the spiritual realm. And we run into this in 1 Samuel 16, verses 16 and following. King Saul was having a really hard time spiritually, emotionally, and otherwise. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit left him and an evil spirit came in to take its place. And it was suggested, perhaps, that Saul should have someone come in and play music, which would drive out the evil spirit and the Holy Spirit would return. Make a long story short, future King David was tapped on the shoulder to come in and do that and to play music for Saul. Now, that's a pretty good deal since David was the one who wrote most of the Psalms and was most likely the most talented musician in Israel at the time. So basically, he brings this person in, Stevie Wonder, who can do anything musically. And what happens here is real interesting. At the end of the chapter, so Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Why am I sharing this old, old story from 3,000 years ago? Well, the reason I'm sharing this story is because sometimes we underestimate the power of music. Music can touch us emotionally. It can touch us intellectually. It can create a sense of nostalgia. If we listen to a song from the past and it helps us to remember what was happening at the time. Most couples have a song. Wendy and I have a song that's I Only Have Eyes for You with Art Garfunkel. And whenever that song comes on, I think of my relationship with my wife. Music is intellectually stimulating, emotionally stimulating, but also spiritual in its nature. And Jerusalem was the center of temple worship. And temple worship was full-bodied and, and fantastic. People would raise their hands and dance. And it was not just quiet, reverent stuff. There was a lot of shouting and yelling and praising God. And people would, would dance to the, the rhythms of their faith. Music has a way of doing that. And you might wonder why, when you go to church, there's all this music. Why do you have to sing all of these songs? Well, when worship leaders lead songs at the well, and our worship pastor, Kim Hines, or our two outstanding worship leaders, along with Kim, Jessica Specht, and also Jennifer Dietz, they bring us into the Lord's presence through music. And if you are spiritually open, you don't have to be a great musician to sense that. It takes uh, sometimes several songs for me to get into the right frame of mind because I'm not naturally a musical person, and I, I don't really resonate with it right away. And after we've sung two or three songs, I find myself letting go of my worries and concerns and all of the things I was thinking about on the way to church and my checklist of things to do before church and make sure the bathroom is unlocked and stuff like that. I find myself in a whole different place by the time worship is over. It doesn't bring the Lord's presence in, Music does not do that. It awakens us to the presence of music all around us. In the book of Revelation, there is worship going on and worship in heaven where the, the elders are casting down their golden crowns before the glassy sea. And I was at a conference once with Jack Hayford. In between sessions, Jack, Pastor Jack and I and a few other people were over at the old chapel, the old church before they built the church on the way. And it's a, a square room. And Pastor Jack said, you know, they're worshiping in heaven right now. And he read the passage from Revelation. And he said, why don't we join them? So anytime we worship or get into music that is directed towards the Lord, we are not starting or initiating worship. We're joining the worship that's going 24-7 in the heavenly realms. I would just invite you to put on some music today to listen to some music, to sing, to be open to where that brings you and how that touches you. Music is a potent weapon. It is a potent tool. It's a power tool. And here in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16, we have an instance where it actually starts to affect the spiritual realm. So the good news for today is don't underestimate music, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow.